Hello once again folks, this is Heidler Tamberlane with another Obscurity in Miniature. Today we're going to take a look at what I actually got painted this week. No, not the Inquisitor, Witchfinder, whatever he's called, but the other guy hiding in my hands here. This is one of the resin pieces from Flying Frog Productions for Shadows of Brimstone. This was a limited edition samurai model, obviously, for Forbidden Fortress. He has a face mask. I believe that's the big difference between this version and the plastic one that's going to be included in the box, which I have yet to receive. Try to do something fancy with this pants there, hence the fancy pants. Uh, don't know if the result was that great in the end. On first thought, I thought this guy was a nice clean model, and then after really spending time with it, I'm not as pleased, but it's painted, so there's that to keep in mind. There was a lot of messy work on the back, and where the panels actually are separate was kind of hard to see and you can see there's a lot of pitting and stuff going on on his back which I'm not really pleased with I don't know what that was all about so from a distance when he's in focus not too bad up close you can see there's quite a bit of not so pleasantness going on there but he's done he's also not really in scale very well with the GW stuff but that's the case with most of the flying frog figures. They're a lot larger. I'm gonna set our witch hunter friend to the side there and bring up the next model, which is yet another samurai. This is from North Star for their Rodian game with Osprey that they make, part of their Koryu Buntai. So I didn't do the greatest job. It was a really quick and dirty job, but again, he's finished, he's painted, and I'm assuming he's based on somebody from the Seven Samurai, but I'm not sure who. For characters that I do know who they're based on, this one is obviously supposed to be based on Toshiro Mifune from the very same movie. Now, for whatever reason, his legs came out really sloppy, but you know what? I can always fix that up. So he's done. Um, the thing with these figures, and I've got this gripe with most of the North Star medals, is the figures are like, I don't know, just kind of slapped together. There's not a lot of care involved, and I know the sculptor really does put a lot of care and work into his models but i'm just gonna guess these are earlier sculpts that he's done his newer stuff looks a lot better he's the guy steve soleil i believe that does lucid eye miniatures the book of the red elf king games like that but they still have a lot of personality that's the thing i really like about those models speaking of other models with personality we have yet another we're going on an asian theme here this is master enos i believe what it was his name from GCT Studios Bushido game. I know I did a video on it once upon a time. I like the model. It's very glossy because my matte spray died on me and I'm going to have to replace that. So you can see he's a little on the shorter side, but then again, our flying frog friend is quite large, whereas our North Star figures are a little bit more in scale with older GW stuff. All right, speaking of older stuff, here is, and I, again with the samurai theme, a clan war figure, a random clan war. I want to say he's from the Dragon Clan, but I, I don't know. I liked him. And fortunately, I have four other guys of the exact same sculpt that I don't know what I'm going to do with. I'm going to try painting them all up differently just, just because. But I'm kind of happy with how he turned out for a simple basic sculpt and his big, thick swords, especially when comparing to other samurai models on the market like the War Games Factory. Warlord Test of Honor guys, and they're microscopically thin ones. Let's see what else we got. Oh, since we're kind of going on our old-fashioned theme, here we have from Dracula's America. This is the Grave Digger, and again, he's quite glossy at the moment, but we'll get that all sorted out eventually. That face reminds me of something out of Malifaux. I don't know who. Something from the Resurrectionist, most likely. But he scales pretty nice with the other North Star figures, because, after all, it's the same sculptor, most likely. Now you'll notice he's on a smaller base. This is like one of those Frostgrave bases, whereas these guys, um, I just use whatever 25 millimeter slotted bases I had laying around. All right, let's see. What else we got here? In the realms of cheap plastics, I got another of the Deep Cuts Barbarians finished. It's not very cold weather colored, but mm, he's a temperate zone barbarian with very crooked eyes. That doesn't look good. That looks better, but you know what? He's got eyes. We'll give him that. 
Looks like a Cyclops from the side. All right, what else we got? So I actually, I, you know, I got a, quite a bit painted. So I got some quickly done Bones cultists that I'll use for something or other. And in terms of plastics, we have yet another Wrath of Kings model because I haven't had enough of those laying around lately. And I'm not sure what happened there with that silver on his... It was supposed to be a chain, and it does not look like a chain at all anymore. So we're going to have to fix that up. So I made a nice little slurry of uh, gravel and glue to get these guys' bases filled. That worked out pretty well. I did like six or seven of these Wrath of Kings bases all at once just to get them over and done with and out of the way. Because I don't like them at all. Be nice if the camera would stay in focus, wouldn't it? All right, next up, Mr. Happy Breath, our noxious Blight Lord Sorcerer dude from the Dark Imperium box. He was a very quick paint job because I started him along with all of the other Dark Imperium Nurgle guys, and he sat languishing since the box came out. How long ago was that? That was last summer, wasn't it? So it's been a while, but he's finished. I need to dirty up those teeth a bit. I don't like them. But that's easily and done. And then we got two of the Eden figures that have shown up here and finished. I have a third that's like 99% done, but I'm missing the little canister tanks that go on her their backs. It's the girl with the wrench and the cybernetic arms. She is pretty much done. I just can't find where I put that tank, so I'm going to wait until I put that on to finish her up. Actually, after painting these guys, I was really happy with them. I know it's not the greatest paint job, especially looking at Mohan's uh, comparison photos out there of the figures that he painted for the box, but then again, it's his company, so he better do a damn good job. She's still my favorite one of the bunch. And we're going to make her shield a little bit dirty. But, you know, nice junky tech looking figures. I might add to the detail on her goggles. I'm not sure. You weren't painted this week. You have to leave the photo. And finally, as everybody's milling about here, let's see if I can get everybody on the screen. We're not done, by the way. Far from it. Let's spew your toxic nonsense over there. I finished working on quite a few of the Fallout Brotherhood of Steel figures. These are their knights in combat armor, as opposed to power armor. So they were a quick and dirty job, but they're finished. And for the amount of time that I put into them, I'm reasonably pleased with the results. I mean, I didn't spend all day on them. One. So these two are the identical pose. One of these came from the starter. One came from the Brotherhood of Steel booster. And this one, I'm not sure which set he came in. One or the other. And finally we have the T60 power armor. Now this model, I had a really difficult time trying to actually discern any kind of interesting stuff to do with it other than the pipes. There's a couple of different grays and blacks in there and some silvers, but for the most part he's just a big walking tin can. But you know what, that's what they look like and that's what they're supposed to be. Not pictured is one of the other frontline knights in power armor, or not power armor, combat armor, I'm sorry, and I don't know where I put him. I think he's probably hanging out with the other power armor suit that came in the starter, who is about 95% done. So, overall, I'm fairly happy with the amount I got done this week, because if I don't get it done, it's not going to get done ever. So what is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen figures in all painted this week. Not bad. Not bad for a busy week. So, with that said, hope this has been somewhat motivating for you guys. At least if I can get this done with kids and work and life in the way, then there's no excuse, people. You should, too. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with his obscurities and miniatures saying bye-bye. Out of focus, even.